Hey there, my name's Joe. I'm a maths tutor. Uh, I'm from Essex, but I do all of my tutoring online at the moment. Um, so I wanted to talk to you today about fractions to try and offer a little bit of help with adding and subtracting fractions. So we're going to jump straight in uh, to an example here. I've got a half plus uh, two thirds. Now we can't add those together and um, we might be able to sort of work it out, um, but, but we can't just add them straight together. I always think about it like these are different sized pizza slices. So this is a half size slice. Apologies for my drawing here. Um, and then this is going to be a, a two thirds size slice. So two lots of thirds of a pizza. <laughs> Hopefully you can see that. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, we can't add them together. If we try and add them together, we're not going to be. What we need to do is work out when we're adding fractions. I always think a bit about it in terms of pizza, trying to add them together and count how many whole pizzas we've got. And that'll be whole numbers and then any extra slices that we've kind of got left over. That'll tell us what we've got in total for adding and subtracting fractions. Think about it as adding and subtracting pizza slices. Now here, trying to add that half and those two thirds, we, we kind of can't get them in. We kind of can't. It, it won't fit together into one whole pizza. It will be messy and kind of left over and it doesn't it doesn't work. So what we need to do is actually split those up into um, slices that make more sense for what we're trying to do here. And in terms of maths, what we're going to do is we're going to find a common denominator for both of, of those uh, both of those fractions. So we're trying to work out um, another way to express each of those fractions, which makes more sense sort of with each other. So if we if we express those fractions in terms of the same size pizza slice or the same type of fraction, and then we can just add them straight together, and that that works fine. So we need to find the lowest common multiple of two and three. So the lowest number that both of those numbers will, will go into. So one way to start is to multiply them together. And here, um, if we do that, what we get is six. And that actually is the lowest common multiple, the lowest number that they will both go into. So we need to now express those fractions in sixths rather than halves and thirds. And here's the trick to doing that. We look at the bottom number of the first fraction and we say, well, hey, look, I have gone from two to six. What have I done? I've multiplied by three. So then I do the same to the top number here. Multiply one by three, so I get three sixths. And if I had three sixths of a pizza, I would have half of a pizza. So that makes sense. It does, it does work. Um, and then I'm gonna do the same. I'm just gonna rub that out here. I'm going to do the same with the second um, one. Let me just rub this out because otherwise we'll end up drawing over myself here. So I'm going to do the same with this one here. So I'm going to look at a third to a sixth. What have I done to get from three to six? Well, in this case, I've multiplied by two. So I need to do the same to the top. And I've got two on top. So it's going to be two times two, which is four. So I've got three sixths and four sixths. Now, now I've, what I've got is a is, is two fractions that are kind of the same size pizza slices. So if we add them together and kind of arrange them as a whole pizza, um, it makes much it makes much more sense. We can see what we're doing, and we're not going to get any kind of weird shaped um, weird shaped pizzas. They'll add up into whole numbers uh, much much better. So three sixths plus four sixths. I could just add those numbers right across, keep them on top of a six. So three plus four gives us seven. Um, so seven sixths is, is what we've ended up with. Now here, this is something called an improper fraction. And all that means is that the top number is bigger than the bottom number. The numerator is bigger than the denominator. And we don't really we don't really like that. That's not really how to present a number in, in, in maths. What we should do is to change that into a um, what's called a mixed number. So that's a whole number and a fraction together. So what we've essentially add, ended up with is we've got one. We've got a whole pizza that's now divided into six. Again, apologies for my drawing. So that's one whole pizza. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six slices there but we've got seven slices so we have one slice of a sixth of a pizza left over so this counts for one and this counts for one sixth of that pizza so one and one sixth is our answer now that's relatively simple when you only have one whole but if you start dealing with um, improper fractions where the number on top is much much bigger than the number on the bottom 
a helpful way to do it is to go up the times table of the numerator, so in this case the six times table, until you get just before the number on the top. So in this case it's easy because it's just one times six and then we've got a little bit left over. But if you had something like, um, you know, 27 fifths, you'd go up and you'd say 5, 10, 15, 25 um, and two fifths left over. Okay, so let's look at an example that's a bit more similar to that. So we're going to say, um, we're going to say eight thirds plus um, seven fifths. So this is a much more complicated example, but the principles stay the same. So again, we need to find our common denominator. Um, in this case, again, we're going to multiply the 3 by the 5 to give us a common denominator. Sometimes when you're dealing with bigger numbers, that won't take you to the lowest common multiple. It is acceptable not to use the lowest common multiple, but it will make your maths harder. So it's good practice to try to find the lowest common multiple of, of those two numbers to, make, um, to, 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 to use as your common denominator. So we're going to use 15 in this case, which is fine. So we've got 15 and 15. So I'm going to look first of all at this one here. So I've gone from 3 to 15, and I, that means that I've multiplied uh, by 5. So I need to do the same with the 8 on top. 8 times 5 is 40. And again on the bottom, uh, for the second equation, I have gone from 5 to 15, and in that case I've multiplied by 3. So I need to do the same on the top, which gives me 21. Now I'm in a position where I have a common denominator for both, so I can just add these two numbers on the top straight away, um, and I get 61 over 15. Now, interestingly here, again, I've got an improper fraction. This, this fraction is not, um, is not proper, it's improper. Um, so I need, to, I need to make that into, change that into a uh, mixed number. So I'm going to go up, I'm actually going to write it out here, I'm going to go up the 15 times tables. So I start with 15, 2 times 15 is 30, and then 45, and then 60, and then 75. Well, if I look at this here, I've got, so each one of these, each step here is a whole number. So this is 1 times 15, 2 times 15, 3, 4, and 5 times 15. And I can really clearly see here that 60 is the last multiple of 15 before I get to 61, which is how many 15ths I've got. So 60 15ths is gonna give me four. And then the remainder I have left over, I've got 61 15ths, 60 of those gives me a whole number of four and then end up with one over 15 left over. So if I were to do this in terms of pizzas, I would have divided up my um, all of my pizzas into 15th slices, so each pizza would be 15 slices. If I sort of just had all of those in a pile and I tried to make pizzas out of them, I'd be able to make four pizzas and I'd have one slice of 15th left over, one 15th left over. The principle is exactly the same if you're subtracting um, fractions. So let's have a look here. Um, I might say I've got two thirds, take away one quarter. So these are quite small fractions, but still almost impossible to kind of do without um, this mathematical aspect to it. So I'm going to again find the lowest common multiple, which here is 12 for both. I just multiply them together to do that. First fraction, two thirds to get from a third to a twelfth. I've multiplied by four, so I need to do the same on top, which gives me eight. And then from four to twelve, I've multiplied by three. So I do the same to the top of that second fraction, which gives me three. So now I've got eight twelfths and I've put a plus in there, which is a mistake. Take away three twelfths. And I can do that now very easily because I've got uh, the common denominator for both. So eight take away three, it tells me what goes on top. So that's gonna be five twelfths as my final answer. And what you see here is actually the process for both of those, addition and subtraction of fractions, is almost identical. It's pretty much identical right up until you get to this sort of stage here. So this whole first bit, the, the idea here is exactly the same, right until we get to this last bit, this last sort of bit where I've got um, the, the over a common denominator, and I'm just subtracting. That's the only difference. And I think very often in maths what can happen is we can sort of look at something that is similar to what we know, 
but a little bit different and it can sort of feel a little bit scary. Um, and I hope that this demonstrates that that, sh that isn't necessarily the case. Um, so just come back to you here. Um, so I hope that's been helpful. Um, I'm a maths tutor, honey hands tuition. If you, um, wherever you are in the country, if you need a bit of uh, help, either sort of um, weekly or you just want to tune in for a, a, a quick chat about one particular aspect, please do get in touch via the Facebook page, which you'll find linked down below. Um, and I'll keep bringing out these videos and hopefully let me know if, in the comments if they're helpful or if you have any questions and I'll try to get back to you and answer them. All right. Thanks very much. Bye bye.